All right, module five. Woo! Thousand diphthongs. So we're actually moving into looking at um, real speech sounds, trying to decode these uh, from their spectrum, from their spectrogram, um, and such things. Um, all right. So let's take a look at what we're doing this week. Overall, general theme of what we're doing this week is we're going to identify vowels and diphthongs by the way, diphthong. What a crazy word. D I P H T H O N G S. Diphthong. It's weird to spell. It's weirder to say. And you will definitely hear me say diphthong sometimes. Because that's just what it's what I used to think the word was when I was in undergrad. And uh, I think a lot of people do, really. Um in fact, it's it's one accepted uh, alternative spelling in uh, some dictionaries. But uh, so anyway, basically, what I'm saying here is, if you say diphthong or if you say diphthong, they're both accepted in some dictionaries, and so you shouldn't feel bad. And if somebody tries to make fun of you for it, go get a dictionary, open it up, and put it in their face. Make sure first that it's the dictionary that has both spellings. But then. Shove it in their face. All right. Uh, anyway, diphthong craziness just means just means two sounds, really. Okay. So you're going to identify vowels and diphthongs using spectra and spectrograms, uh, and predict their articulatory configurations. That's what we're doing this week. Um, by the way, we learned this last time, but spectra and spectrograms, of course, are slightly different. Um, a spectrogram has time as part of the uh, representation, so we can see what's going on by time going this way. Uh, and then we've got frequency going this way. And of course, the darker it is, the more energy that's in that band. And then a spectrogram, nope, sorry, that's a spectrogram. And then a spectrum here, or multiple of them is a spectra, our spectra, I should say. So the plural is spectra, single is a spectrum is just showing us the frequency representation and the amplitude of all those frequencies. So spectra here, spectrograms here. All right. So uh, we want to, we have our different sub-modules that we're going to talk about. We're going to describe the relationship between theoretical resonant frequencies and format frequencies. Theoretical, of course, are ones that we can mathematically come up with based on what we know about um, the shape of the vocal tract, how those relate to actual measured format frequencies. Um, they're not exactly the same, but of course, nothing that is theoretical is exactly the same as in the real world. So that's okay, but it is close. We're also going to describe the articulatory configuration and format frequencies of corner vowels. Corner vowels, of course, are these ones at the very edges of our vowel diagram. So E, U, A. Uh. We'll talk about some others as well. But these are most of the corner vowels uh, that we're going to be seeing. Um, and why do we look at the corner vowels? Well, because they're just the most extreme in difference from each other. So it wouldn't make sense to look at some that are really close together. So we look at our corner vowels. Um, and then we're going to also predict the articulatory configuration of vowels using format frequencies and vice versa. So um, we look at the format frequencies of, say, an E. Well, what, is the, what does the mouth look like when it's making that shape? What does the vocal tract look like? And what is the tongue height, the tongue advancement, things like that? And then also, if we look at what tongue height and tongue advancement are, then can we predict what the format frequency should look like? We're also going to identify vowels using spectra and spectrograms of speech signals. So we'll look at different uh, representations like we see at the top here, try to identify what vowel those are. Um, then we're going to describe the format frequencies and articulatory configuration of diphthongs. Interesting. So they're not quite the same thing as vowels. Basically, if you're not familiar with diphthong, e uh, no, that's a stupid one. That doesn't actually exist. <laughs> a is a good one. A, like bait. Uh, a, right? So you kind of go 
it's not one sound. It's not like ah, uh, like bot, b o t, bot. You can really drag out the ah uh, in bot, but bait you really can't. It's either bait or bait. You can't pick one. It goes through two sounds. That's a diphthong. Then lastly, we're going to identify vowels and diphthongs using Pratt and Audacity. Cool. All right. I'll see you when we talk about the first thing in this, uh, in this module.